ruckus. So, we have been talking about our topic. It is about that time. And we're discussing signs of the time, why we should really look and pay attention to them. We're about to jump into some signs of the time that are actually going on right now in today's time. Things we have seen, but things we may not even realize are signs. We're about to hit the things that go under the radar. So go ahead and get your pen, get your pad, get your Bible, because guess what? We're about to jump into that topic right now. I am his humble servant, and this is Straight Word, the Bible study series, where we get straight into biblical topics without a lot of the unnecessary fluff and distraction. Today's episode is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be part one of this particular subject, but we're about to look at a lot of things that are going on under the radar, some things we may not know about, some things we do know about, but we may not see as signs of the end time. But we're going to pull them out today and take a look at them. Before we jump into that though, I want to get back into a particular scripture that we've already looked at in this series so far. But I want us to look at a very close detail about that. So we're going to go back to Matthew chapter 24. So we're going to revisit Matthew chapter 24 and we're going to read verses 1 through 8. Here it reads. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall be not left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us. When shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man can deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, and pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Nice. So, we already talked about this passage, and we talked about how this marks the beginning of sorrows, just as Jesus said in this passage. But what we didn't focus on is... What exactly does it mean by beginning of sorrows? If we translate that uh, specifically according to what it meant in this text, it means birthing pains. So all of the signs that we discuss are going to be seen before the end comes. The pestilence, the, the famine, the war and rumors of wars. All of these are going to be as birthing pains. When we think about birth and pains, uh, uh, we know that those may come in form of pain or contractions before a woman gives birth to her child, but they start off long away from each other. The pains may come with hours of rest in between. And as the time comes closer and closer for that, that birth to be uh, had or that child to be actually born, those pains begin to get closer and closer and closer together. So how that translates to this, these signs are the things that Jesus is telling us we're going to see in the end. These things are going to happen um, far from each other, 
But the closer we get to the end, the closer we get to the earth and all creation birthing what comes from all of the sin that's been laid in the earth and, and all of the, the sin, the seeds of sin that have been planted, the closer we get to the birthing of that, we're going to see all of these signs begin to happen more often. And people are going to get more used to seeing them. So keep that in mind as we begin to look at these things. Now today, we're going to do things a little bit different. Of course, this is straight words. So we're still going to discuss everything with scripture. So what I want to do is show us some things that, one, we may not have been aware of. Or two, we may not understand that they were signs of the times. Because as we begin to see a lot of things closer and closer together, we may become more complacent with seeing them. But we have to realize there's still signs of the time. There's still the beginning of sorrows. And after we take a look at a few of these, I want to show us a clip, an example of where we are today so i'm gonna save that clip for the end but let's jump into it Okay, cool. So in this series, we have discussed signs of the beginning of sorrow. And also we have discussed, looking in Revelation, signs of the end time or some of the plagues that are going to happen in the end time. So what I want us to do in the comments, let's jump in and we can discuss some of the things we just saw as signs. And let's talk about if those are signs that are listed as uh, the beginning of sorrows or are we starting to see some things that are listed as the very end time signs jump in those comments and let's talk about it also if you know any scriptures we can pull to uh to, to match up with some of the things we've seen here drop those scriptures as well because we're going to jump into that discussion next week with pulling a lot of scriptures so let's make this interactive and see what we can figure out together so now that we have looked at those signs and we've looked at different things to open our mind to begin to think about what's going on in the world over, around us i want to share a clip of something i found and this is showing that satan and and the, his followers are on their job they know the agenda like, like the young people say, they know their assignment, right? So we want to take a close look at this. And I want to um, shout out to the YouTube channel, Knowledge is Power, who 
already kind of did a breakdown with some scriptures of this event that happened. So we're going to play a little snippets of, of this video, which already has some scriptures on it. And we're going to see exactly what the message is that's being conveyed, even subliminally. So let's take a look at that. Tonight we're telling the story about how Birmingham is connecting us with every corner of the world and with one another. It's been a dark period in our lives, but tonight we're going to sprinkle a little stardust on the ceremony. The death of a star in the outer universe and the shards of light from its demise are heading straight for us. Here is Stella. Well named and she will find one of the shards. Now, I'm no Brian Cox, but I'm told that the death of a star can trigger the birth of other stars, and I reckon this one is going to do just that. It is a reminder of our common ancestry, a reminder of where we all come from into that shard. She whispers her hopes and dreams. The African Sakara drums beat sending out the call to gather from the Alexander Stadium. Choreographed with percussionist Abraham Paddy Tede. That's him at the top of the tower. Birmingham's Tower of Babel, or Tower of Birmingham, if you like. It rises out of the city's canal waters and towpaths. There are around 35 miles of canals here. Its waterway is a key part of the development in the Industrial Revolution. Seventy-two houses, Stella and 71 other dreamers are brought from around the world, around the Commonwealth to Birmingham, representing the 72 nations. But of course, for all the colour and noise, the characters, the invention, this was an industrial area. The black country, so-called because of all the black smoke thrown out by its factories, the furnaces that glowed red at night, there was a dark side to the Industrial Revolution, a darker side to the bull ring. There was female chain makers of the Industrial Revolution were underpaid and overworked. And not only were they responsible for making some of the chains used in the slave trade, but they too were enslaved by their terrible circumstances. And now, enter the bull. As the beat pounds to remind us of the relentless drive of industry, they drag into the Alexander Stadium. A beast, a bull, 10 meters high, heavily armored. Now scarred by past hurt and enraged by injustice, the bull breaks free and causes pandemonium. And in a parallel act of emancipation, the women break their own chains. The dreamers have stayed. And they are about to offer compassion to a very scared icon of this city. striking images of the show so far. It's a very how to train your dragon moment. This is Stella offers friendship and compassion to tame the beast. Stella 
and our athlete dreamers call for a moment of reflection and of light as she and the bull call for a moment of reconciliation. All is stilled. It's time for the shards to work their magic again. Stella and the dreamers use them to call for a moment of reflection and reconciliation. In fact, it's the chain makers that we saw earlier and they lift away the bull's armor, the symbol of his enslavement and theirs. And he will be revealed as an iconic symbol of light. A stunning display inside the Alexander Stadium. A wonderful piece of art, as Hazel said, it will be in the city of Birmingham in the centre after these games. And the crowd moved by what they've seen. And the Bulls starring role is not over yet. Okay, so we see on a world stage, we see that the enemy is presenting a certain message and, and showing that, you know, he's really on his job about making sure the agenda he has in mind is going forth. If we keep our eyes open, we can see a lot of this message is going to be in some of our favorite movies, some of the music we, we may uh, have been listening to, a lot of the media, even if we watch the news. Uh, a lot of things around us will begin to see those signs where we may not have seen them previously. So keep your eyes and ears open. But this is not for us to be fearful. Remember, we already discussed the scriptures show us what we are supposed to do when we start to see these signs. So this is actually a warning to us for us to be prepared for what's to come. But I'm very thankful for that. Uh, God could allow us to take a look at some of the things going on around us. And next week, we're actually going to dive into getting some scriptures to match up with some of the things we've seen. So we can discuss in greater detail what actually is going on and what the Bible says about these things and how we should continue to prepare. Because this is all about getting ready for the end, right? Well, let's say a quick prayer together. Dear Father, thank you so much for allowing us to continue our study. Dear Father, thank you for even bringing this topic to our attention. Uh, thank you for revealing things that may seem normal to us, but you're showing us in your word that are really not normal things, just things we have grown comfortable with. Um, thank you for showing us the signs of the time, dear Father, through the world events, through nature, through uh, natural and unnatural occurrences, through um, just everything that the word showed us is going to happen. We see that prophecy is being revealed even right before our eyes. We see that prophecy has been being revealed for a while, but just as birth and pains get closer and closer together and happen more often before the birthing process, we also see that the signs are occurring more and more, so we are getting closer to the end. Dear Father, I want to ask that we be cleansed and be vessels that be, are, are able to be used by you in the end time dear father help us to be those who, who show others what's going on and be able to lead them to you so that uh, they can be saved from what's going on around us we thank you so much for um, allowing the holy spirit to lead and guide us uh, we ask and pray that we are our vessels to 
allow your will to be done on earth. These things we ask and pray in Yahshua's precious name. Thank you, Father. It is done. All right, so remember, we're going to get interactive with this one. We're going to drop those scriptures down in the comments. Any scriptures that you can find to coincide with what we see today. Also, we're discussing all the things we're seeing today, things that are the uh, beginning of sorrows. Or are we seeing things that are actual signs of the end time? Or are we seeing a little bit of both? So in some cases, I think some things are a little bit of both because there are similarities between those two. So drop those in the comments. I'm going to jump down in the comments too so we can get a discussion going. And remember, next week, we're going to pick out uh, particular scriptures to actually show that these things are signs of the end time. Well, I'm enjoying this series and I'm ready for next week already. But until next week, Always remember, study the word for yourself so you can get the straight word with no chase.